Hello, my name is Emma Tobias, and I'm going to talk about the books I really didn't like in 2019. The first book on this list is American Rose by Catherine McGee. This book is a what-if story. What if after Christopher Jackson, Lin-Manuel Miranda, David Diggs, and company had won the Revolutionary War and decided to go with a monarchy instead of a democracy? And what if it was now? And what if it was a CW drama? That's American Royals. American Royals is a book that I should have enjoyed. I love a trashy story. I love like a whole thing where I'm like, this shouldn't work because like, yeah, monarchies are bad, but it kind of sounds fun. Like, I love that. I love it. It's enjoyable to read and watch. At least I thought so. The problem with this book is that I hate every single character, almost equally. There's not one character for me to root for. Like in the um, hit television drama Dynasty, the reboot, there is one character on that show that I really like. I can't tell you the name of the character, but I really like that character and everyone else I hated. It's the same thing here. I should have liked one character, but I didn't. And that is why I didn't like this book. It was needlessly dramatic and there was so much miscommunication. It was otherworldly. This should be a sci-fi book because, or a fantasy, because it's like, what if we were in a society where literally no one communicated? Like, ever like therapists did not exist to tell you to communicate this is what this book is really about the next book on my list is my plain jane i loved the first book in the series my lady jane this is a historical what if sensing a theme aren't we about charlotte bronte becoming friends with a real life girl named jane Eyre, which is interesting because if anybody has met anyone who's ever said Jane Eyre wrote Jane Eyre. It kind of screws with your head. You're like, oh my gosh, Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is the author of the book Jane Eyre. Charlotte Bronte, I don't know her. You know what I'm talking about when people say that? I get why people say that, but this book, if they were to read it, would confuse the situation. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, Charlotte Bronte decides to plagiarize Jane Eyre's life by writing a book about her. But also, Charlotte Bronte gets involved in a, a ghost detective sort of ghostbusters um situation to say that there were too many things happening in this book would be an understatement it is sort of a hot mess i liked the characters but there was like 15 plots too many and all of them were confusing next we have oh man this is not supposed to be controversial, but Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom are two of my least favorite books I read this year. I thought to myself, hey, I read Six of Crows many moons ago when it came out because I liked the Grisha series. I didn't like it then, but I read it physically. Maybe if I listen to the full cast audio, I will fall in love as I am wont to do sometimes. Six of Crows... The audiobook, Crooked Kingdom, the audiobook tried their best. The narrators were good. I like the characters in this universe, in this world. I find them interesting and fully developed, so don't at me at the characters. My problem is the plot. It is meandering. It goes nowhere, but then eventually leads somewhere, which I guess is something. It is confusing. It is at times very not confusing and very boring. There are times when I stopped listening and I still knew what was going to happen. I just wish that the plot had been tightened up. I think it's too long. And I like Leigh Bardugo. I think she's a really talented writer. But these books just don't work for me. And it may be because I'm not a huge fantasy reader. And it may be because I'm not a big heist reader. But I also just think that they're like 300 pages too long. The next book on my list is Spoonbenders by Daryl Gregory. This is a book no one's heard of. I don't think anyone has heard of it. You might have heard of it. It's a fiction. It's a fiction. It's an adult fiction book about a family of psychics um, who used to be popular in the 60s, 70s, and now are no longer um, popular. They're disgraced. 
it's boring. It's not good. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like the audiobook. I didn't like anything about it. You know, part of the problem with Six of Crows is that one of the narrators, or the narrator actually for Spoonbenders, is, is the narrator for Kaz in Six of Crows, which is maybe part of my problem too, because I had a lot of residual hate from this book and this audiobook that led into my read of Six of Crows. So, didn't like it. Didn't think it was good. Next, I have to include the City of Bones saga. I read City of Bones, City of Ashes, and City of Glass. I have for years joked that I was going to read these books, and the reading rush really propelled it. Thank you, Ariel Bissett, for that. The thing with these books is that I really thoroughly enjoyed my reading experience. They were baffling. They were terrible. I thought every moment I was not going to catch up with what possibly could have happened, and then the thing happened, and I still couldn't really catch up with it. But, saying all of that, I did enjoy them, I did like them, but they are bad. Which is why I included them on this list. I have very mixed emotions, mixed feelings. I'm a complex human being, especially when it comes to the City of Bones saga. Next, we have Fixer Up by Tessa Bailey. This seemed to be a hit or miss for a lot of people, and it was definitely a miss for me. At first, I was like, I love this, I love like a high school like crush into adult romance kind of trope whatever that is um I enjoy like sports books because I don't understand them so I think it's fun it's like fantasy but what I think is my main problem with this book <clears throat> is how the characters talk to each other is really cringy and gross like don't say baby as much as you're saying baby or like at all. Just stop. Just stop. Rather Weird by Andrew Caldecott. This is a book that took me over a month to read. It gave me a reading slump because it was just such a slog. I remember every detail about this book. It's also, guess what? A what if book. What if there was just this little county in England that was still chilling in like Elizabethan era except for it had advanced technology like and it was a secret like what would that be like I'm learning that I shouldn't read what if books but also I should because Jasper Ford writes them and he's one of my favorite writers so maybe I should only just read what if books if Jasper Ford writes them potentially this book was boring it was difficult to get through there were too many characters it was well written but also like a complete slog like I mentioned Next book on my list of books that I did not like in this year. There, oh gosh. Okay, this is the last one. I'm gonna end with this one. 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. Again, a hit or miss book. I wanted to like this book. The thing is, I read the Bromance Book Club earlier this year and it features sort of like a, like a tough male protagonist and like a woman. <laughs> Can you believe? And I really enjoyed it. And it kind of redeemed my faith. That and the right swipe redeemed my faith in romance because I just had such a like a bad year with reading romance. This was just, I love the hating game. This book just did not work for me. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the way they talked to each other. I didn't like the relationship. I didn't really understand what they were trying to accomplish with this book. I just didn't like it. Um, and that is sad. It is very sad. So those are the books that I didn't like this year. Anyway, you win some, you lose some. These are some I lost. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna leave now. Bye. What was that?